Hello and welcome to the next Thursday Theory video on the classical mechanics. Today we will discuss about the combined linear and rotational motion. My name is Xenofon Karyophilis and today, like every Thursday, I post a video about a subject in physics that I have already learned in my journey to physics. If you are new to my channel and want to follow me in my journey into physics, whether you are a student, professor or even a physics enthusiast, consider subscribing. You can watch the previous episode on the classical mechanics, theory or exercises in the links below in the description. As I already mentioned, today's video is about the combined linear and rotational motion. We have discussed already about linear and rotational motion of an object and now it's time to understand them while an object has both motions at the same time. You should watch the previous episodes on the classical mechanics theory episodes if you haven't already to understand more about the linear and rotational motion in the link below in the description or in the YouTube card above. Enough talking, let's move to the whiteboard. We will take for example a cylinder in an inclined plane. At first the object is held and then released and starts falling. The first part is to draw the forces that are applied upon the cylinder. Its weight at first and we analyze it in the two axes. Here is the vertical reaction from the ground and the static friction we have it here. The second part is to analyze the motion of the object separated. Let's start with the linear motion. We will use the Newton's second law of motion the total force equals to the product of mass and acceleration. The forces that affect the movement are the static friction and the weights part in the axis of the movement. So we have the equation for the linear motion as following. Here we have the Newton's second law of motion. And now we have that the weight in the movement axis minus the static friction equals to the product of mass and the acceleration of the center of mass of the cylinder. Now let's move to the rotational motion. We will use the Newton's second law for rotation that we saw in the previous episode which states the following. The total net torque is equal to the product of the moment of inertia about the center of mass of the object and its angular acceleration. And since the only force that produces torque in our example is the static friction, we have the equation for the static friction in relation to angular acceleration as following.
Here is the second law of Newton for rotation. And now we finally have the equation for the rotational motion. The moment of inertia of the cylinder is given and it is as following. And so if we put the moment of inertia of cylinder in the rotational motion equation, we have that the static friction equals to the mass multiplied by the radius multiplied by the angular acceleration. The most important part of today's episode is the following. In order for the cylinder to rotate or else to move without slippage, the velocity of the point of touch A between the cylinder and the inclined plane should be zero. The velocity of the point of mass is the point's velocity due to linear motion, which is also the same as the velocity of the center of mass minus the velocity due to the rotational motion which is the product of angular velocity and the radius of the cylinder as we said before the velocity of the point of touch should be zero so we can understand that the velocity of the center of mass equals to the angular velocity multiplied by the radius of the cylinder. And of course, if we dif differentiate this equation, we have the following. Which means that the acceleration of the center of mass equals to the angular acceleration multiplied by the radius of the cylinder. With these three equations that we found, we can solve and find any problem in the combined linear and rotational motion. I really hope that you like this episode. If you like this episode, consider subscribing to my channel. You can also thumbs up and share this video. I would love to see your comments on this video to let me know whether you learned something like I did and whether you found this video helpful or not. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and also Google Plus for more content every week. Links are below in the description. Thank you again for watching and see you in another episode of A Journey Into Physics.